If you want to learn the best way to use high intensity interval training to burn the most number of calories, you've come to the right video. Because here what you, here's what you can expect to learn. First of all, we'll give a definition. What is high intensity interval training? Or for now, let's just call it HIT, so we don't have to say the full, uh, the full phrase each time. Then we'll talk about three reasons why HIT appeals to people, followed by specifically which HIT exercises burn the most calories? Is it running, swimming, cycling, rowing, or something else? Then we'll go a step deeper and ask why do people want to burn maximum calories in the first place? So we'll dive into that. But before we do, who am I? My name is Igor. I am the author of 13 books on exercise and nutrition, including four Amazon bestsellers. As well, I've been a personal trainer since 2006, and I've been training other trainers in my methodology since 2013 by speaking at various different personal training conferences around the world. I've done four, over 400 presentations to some of Canada's largest corporations, including IBM, American Express, Bosch, University of Toronto, Investors Group, and others. If you want to learn when I publish more videos about interval training and other exercise modalities, click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So let's dive in. First of all, let's give a definition. What is HIT? HIT is high intensity interval training. Let's break that down. The definition of interval training means you are alternating a period of high intensity followed by a period of low intensity or no intensity. The duration of the high intensity intervals is typically under two minutes. It could be 10 seconds, could be a minute, could be 90 seconds, could be could be two minutes. Um, and the duration of the rest period could also vary. Uh, might be 10 seconds, might be as much as five minutes, might be even longer. Um, so that is interval training. That's the definition of intervals, alternating a hard period with an easy period. As for equipment, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're running or if you are swimming or if you are cycling or any other modality. Interval training is not about the equipment. It's about alternating a period of easy with a period of difficult. And so that's the interval training part of things. What about the high intensity side of things? What makes something, an exercise, high intensity? When it comes to cardio, that is over 85% of your maximal heart rate, also known as your HR max. Now, if you're wondering, what is my HR max? Well, here it is. It is 220 minus your age. So if you are, hypothetically speaking, 50 years old, your maximum heart rate is 170 beats per minute. High intensity is 85% of 170. I hope that makes sense. And so what are the three reasons why HIT appeals to people? Well, the number one reason uh, people do it is what's called the afterburn effect. The afterburn effect means is when you are exercising, you burn a certain number of calories. But with interval training, when you finish exercising, you continue to burn um, calories for a certain period of time after the exercise. Now, here's the thing. The truth is that the afterburn effect has been grossly overestimated. You heard like incredible figures of, you know, 400 or, or more calories after the exercise is how many burn, uh, but that's not true. Here is one study titled Comparison of Energy Expenditure Elevations After Submaximal and Supramaximal Running. So here's what the researchers did with, in this study. They compared modern density exercise to high intensity exercise. Modern density being 70%, high intensity being a, uh, 105%. And here is what they found. Um, the modern density group burned an additional 7.1% calories after they finished exercising. The high intensity group burned an additional 13.8% after exercising. If you were to actually put some numbers to this in terms of calories, let's hypothetically say uh, one person in the modern intensity group burned 400 calories during exercise. An additional 7.1% is approximately 28, uh, 28 more calories. The high intensity group, let's say they also burned 400 calories during exercise, and they burn an additional 14% after exercise. Well, that brings them up to a whopping 56 calories, okay? And so the difference between the afterburn effect between modern density and high intensity is very, very minimal. It's like three lettuce leaves. Uh, so it's not very much. That's not to say you shouldn't do interval training. It's just probably, it's not going to burn as many calories afterwards as you think. Um, the other reason that interval training really appeals to people is time savings. By exercising with more intensity, you can actually burn more calories 
per minute. And of course, it's not boring. A lot of people yeah, think of steady state cardio as hamster cardio. You are on one piece of equipment, um, an exercise bike or a treadmill or elliptical, and you're getting nowhere. You're just watching TV. You're like a hamster. So, but interval training is definitely not boring. Uh, you're still getting nowhere, but you're alternating periods of high intensity with low intensity. And so just your own, um, your pulse, your breathing rate, et cetera, that keeps you entertained. So you don't need TV or music for entertainment. Um, and so if you're wondering, which hit exercises burn the most calories? Well, here's the thing. The exercises themselves don't matter whatsoever. The exercises that have the highest average heart rate over the duration of your session are the ones that burn the most calories. And really the gap between the greatest and the smallest is very, very, very minuscule. So basically go with the one that you like the best. But if you wanna run your own experiment of what causes the greatest calorie burn, uh, do four or five exercise sessions with all the same intervals. Compare running versus cycling versus rowing versus elliptical and whatever else appeals to you and doing the exact same interval workout, uh, same work intervals, let's say 30 seconds of hard, followed by the same rest intervals, follow, let's say two minutes and repeat that for the same number of times for each of those and see which one results in the highest average heart rate over that duration. You'll probably see that they're almost, they're all very, very similar in a very, very tight range. And so really it's just a matter of preference. But let's ask a deeper question. Why do people want to burn maximum calories in the first place? Usually it's fat loss. Because if people care about cardiovascular improvements, the, the 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 metric to track is not calories. It's you know heart rate, it's recovery, it's a bunch of other things, but it's not calories. The people interested in the calorie burn from, from interval training are usually interested in fat loss. However, here's something to think about. If you burn a lot of calories from one source, it could affect the amount of calories you burn from other sources. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say... In a, in a typical day, you would burn 2,000 calories from four sources. These are what were what's called your total daily energy expenditure or your TDE. Source number one is basal metabolic rate. Uh, source number two is thermic effect of food or how many calories do you burn uh, from eating your food. Source number three is something called NEAT on, or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That is how many calories do you burn through physical activity that is not purposeful exercise, like um, shopping around, like uh, taking the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator, uh, like fidgeting, all these things. Um, the, these are not purposeful exercise, but they are physical activity and they can add up throughout the day. And finally, exercise. So let's say, hypothetically, you're currently burning 200 calories per day um, through exercise and an additional 500 calories per day through, well, fidgeting. Um, now you hear about the benefits of interval training, so you start to really up your intensity of exercise. Now you burn 500 calories through exercise, but because you're actually more tired, you burn 200 calories through fidgeting, and you're still burning an overall 2,000 calories per day. Also, one other possible effect is that you have compensatory overeating. Maybe you did burn those 500 calories per day through exercise, um, a, you reduced your meat, and B, you became hungrier, you stimulated your appetite, so you actually ate more. That's just hypothetical because interval training affects everybody differently. For some people, there will be no compensation. You increase your calories by, by, by you increase your, sorry, you increase your caloric burn by 300, but there's no drop in fidgeting. So that's great. And there's no increase in appetite. So perfect. But in some people, there will be some kind of compensatory mechanisms. Uh, and you don't know who you are ahead of time. You can only you know, estimate this based on um, retroactive body fat measurements and so on, okay? So does that mean you should avoid interval training? No, interval training is a very beneficial tool. Just don't use it as the primary tool for fat loss. It's a fantastic tool for endurance. It's a fantastic tool for boredom. It's a fantastic tool for overall cardiovascular health. Just don't use it as a primary tool for fat loss. The primary tool for fat loss should be nutrition. As the saying goes, you cannot out-exercise a bad diet. So if you're wondering, what is a good diet? Well, I have an entire video about that where it helps you calculate how many calories should you be eating and within those calories, how much protein should you be eating? If you want to check that video out, check it out on your screen below, um, or on your screen right now or in the description below.